Oh my! Hey chat, what's up? Hey. Hey Twitch. What's How's it up? going? Thanks for coming down. Do a little help. Hey. It's time for a little help. I'm yeah. Tommy. Ben. This Hi. is Michelle. Oh. Oh my. Hey chat, what's up? Let's uh let's disable our talk back a bit. There's a remote on the other end of this table. No, it's the other one. Hi, Garion. What's up? The other one. Um, it's on the other side of this keyboard. Wow. Believe in yourself. We got too many dogs and too many keyboards. Oh, and I'm listening to the stream, which is not confusing at all. Let's just let it run, you know? Yeah. Whatever. Mute. Mute is on. So, how are we doing today? Not bad. It's relaxing. Dogging up. The crowd. I used to really mute that, though. <sighs> hey, get down. Other dog. I'm here. We have so many dogs today. It's like dog city over here. It's becoming a dog. I'm just gonna hold thing. on to Michelle so she doesn't get too wrecked. That's cool. Too, what's the word? Wrecked? <laughs> too adventurous? Don't get wrecked. Michelle's kind of crabby too. Let's set that up. Let's get our look feel going. I think 130-ish is about where we where we're hanging out. Yeah, I think that was good. It was easy to see. <laughs> Rock on. Um, let's see, what do you like? Piano? Piano. I'm getting MIDI data. Piano of... Hello. <laughs> Piano 5. Hello feedback, there you go. Sweet. We got doggos. What's piano. up, Etoric? Go piano five. Yeah, buy all of Arturia's stuff. Just do it. I like that really mellow, really mellow sound. We got doggos. I'm still getting up, feedback. Go piano I feel like five. Yeah. The buy top. All of oh, you know what? Stuff. I have the stream open over here too. Oh, that's what's happening. Yeah. So I had the stream open on my computer, and we had it on our courtesy monitor. And we had it on Ben's laptop. Yeah. Which means that it's getting typed into like when you hold two mirrors against each other, basically. Hmm. Sweet. That is a nice mellow piano sound. We're gonna have a little bit of a delay with it. Mm -hmm. I wanna see if I can kick down the latency just a bit. Is this part of a specific package or is it just called piano five? Um, piano Roman numeral five. It's uh piano V. Love that. That's just beautiful. Another really popular uh, one around here is True Pianos. Jake uses on a lot of tracks. Oh yeah, and True Pianos. Um, the cool thing about it is it's super small. Mm -hmm. Like, Piano V is no slouch. There are a whole bunch of settings over here. It's really cool. Um, but this is one of Arturia's many kits. I bought all of their stuff in a bundle because I was just like, I'm sorry, what? You have, you know, finally I can afford all of your plugins. Um, and so I got a good number of instruments for a low, low cost. I've said it probably every week because we use at least one of these instruments. It's a great write off. Oh, totally. <laughs> Absolutely. So I took down the buffer size a little bit. Um, what it does is it increases your intensity, like the CPU uh, resource load, because it doesn't have an, a, a lot of extra time to process um, the buffer. But DAW, go-go's, doggos, um, gives us a little bit better. We're playing through a, a soundbar, so we're still getting a little bit of a delay, but it's only a few milliseconds. And you can't see our beautiful keyboard, but trust us, it is. Uh, when we say it's beautiful, it's beautiful. What are you guys doing today? How's chat? Chat's pretty chill. Everybody's saying hi. They're saying good doggos. Darian's heard of a Big Mac attack and a panic attack, but what's a rap attack? He says. 
A rap attack? I don't know. Are you looking over my shoulder? Generally speaking, everyone likes the dogs. That's oh, great. universally. Now doggos is trending. No. I was reading an article uh, this week that says the dogs, uh, dogs dream about us. That's cool. While they're sleeping, and <laughs> cats dream about hunting and killing things because they are cats. But dogs dream about people. Can't fix cats, you know. They also dream about. I imagine running around. Michelle sleep barks. It's very. Funny. She doesn't bark really much out loud, but in her sleep she'll go. <laughs> Just trying to get your attention. Let's see. So now we have something proper. What are we going to do today with hmm. this beautiful piano? What you got in mind? Oh, uh, beautiful piano. I've been watching Jake's workflow for a few months now. Mm -hmm. And he uses beautiful piano to lay out a song structure and then he pulls elements out of that like piano track and maybe he does a rhythm track to go along with it mm -hmm. and kind of pushes that into a um, into into an arrangement he makes he kind of like plays through as much as he can and he punches in we can kind of go over that process a little bit you know there's an interesting workflow hack that i think you're really adept at talk to me uh how you basically will let's say you're doing a take right mm -hmm. and you use the session view instead of using a, a normal daw midi sequencer you've got that basically this view, this like right, right. long stream, you know, oh, I did that thing, and then you go in and you tweak the individual takes. But you like to use session view and kind of go vertically and just be like, nope, don't like it, next one. Nope, don't like it, next one. Yeah. Um, and that is a really, like, that blew Jake's mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like last week, he was telling me like, dude, I just, like Ben just introduced me to this like one thing in Ableton that's going to save me like three hours at a time. Right. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's, that's, uh, I'm, I'm like, what I do in my spare time, like, whatever free time I have is generally, like, research. I'm always on YouTube and, like, kind of linking through different sites. Um, I'll have, uh, I'll have a lecture or, like, a, a some kind of, what's it called? Not a, it's another word for lecture, like, a, like a topic. A topic, some type of, yeah. A, uh, to expound upon, <laughs> right. explore somebody's 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 uh, demonstration or <laughs> presentation um, on one like in the background window while I'm digging through like lists of articles or I have tons of like I don't know if I can show my notes. Uh, yeah, why not? This doesn't look particularly dangerous. So let me pull that up real quick. So what I do whenever I meet people. Um, I will just kind of go through like, oh yeah, that sounds like a good show. Oh, here's a photo of some notes. Like, here's more notes, <laughs> more notes. Uh, notes for Mint Potion. Um, Hyper th Hyper K notes. One of my clients. Um, and I'll just take notes from most people that I meet and just keep it for later in case I'm like, oh wait, what is? Uh, let's see. Vinyl Williams. I don't know. And like, kind of <laughs> eliminate. Um, as I go, writing down jokes, writing down ideas for songs and things to research. Um, when I was in college, no, I can't show you guys that. I um, had just you know sketchbooks that would double as notebooks. And I remember for one of my like quarterly reviews, one of the instructors was just like, "This is a very mature." Uh, very mm -hmm. mature sketchbook you know using it using it just it's just paper guys but you know writing down problem solving i'm kind of getting back into the habit of using the actual sheet of paper it helps me keep things a little bit more organized because i can either throw it away or i can give it to somebody um but that's about it but always listening to discord which i'm going to check out really quick um, this is our nice, do you like our frame? I made this today. I like this a lot. It's, uh, this is kind of the style that I'm going to go for. I can see it's been a little bit I like altered. like the logo, the font. Yeah. It's really laid back. And this is a very laid back show. Everything else we do is kind of like cranked up. But for a little help, we like the... Well, you know, you gotta, stuff. you start the work light. You know, start the week light. Um, NES dude is totally right. We start... We take it slow. We will be doing Rockstar Academy today, but I do not believe we will be in the business of 
uh, I think, what's it called? The drumming shows the are drumming out, show, out Brian. today. Uh, Brian's out today. So, we have drumming to do shows a will be meeting. back. So, let's get to the... Uh, let's get to the meat and potatoes. So, do right. you want to talk about this flow a little bit and come up with a weird song and kind of demonstrate what this is? Sure. So, let me get a tempo going. If you guys saw a couple weeks ago, I have a hotkey set up for tap tempo. And I think kind of just going blindly into it. Um, I usually live in this 60 to 110 range. I'm a really laid back person. Um, I'll hit E, another key I have set up to get my metronome going. I'm really concerned about the delay. Um, and I can hit R at any time to drop in. And so punching in and out, hitting record, and turning record off is actually a pretty... I don't know, common, if not useful technique that I see Jake do all the darn time. If you want to learn to compose like Jake Kaufman, then listen to us, because we watch him do it relatively frequently. <laughs> um, I guess the only thing I didn't really take into account was how far away the keyboard was from this chair. Mm. But that's all right. So uh, one thing also, one thing I learned from him really early on was that you shouldn't focus so much on starting your song at measure one um, for pretty good reason mostly to do with like you know I can it's a it's non-destructive like I can edit that later you know so yeah. Hmm. Let's do more and more. So I didn't even start that on time or finish that relatively on time. I don't even know what the heck that is. The only thing I can think of is cheating and using the pentatonic scale that comes with every piano. Called G flat. Pentatonic scale. <laughs> well, here. Right? This is so chill, like I'm... Time down here, we can speed it up later. But hey, hey, I'm feeling that. That's that's pretty chill. There's something at the beginning that I wish we could like. FL does this great thing where it'll record MIDI kind of all the time and let mm -hmm. you paste it back from like your undo buffer. Um, Battle rap attack. Welcome to the chat room. Games are good. So I guess the first kind of workflowish type of maneuver. Let's find like a starting point here. Uh, ah, you'll notice that these notes are not playing, even though they're here. Mm. And that's because the MIDI on signal, like if you imagine these orange bars, are the oh are impossible to see because of my position on screen. Um, right here, you can see F sharp two, the name of the note. And you can see the duration, which is the length of the bar. The beginning of the bar in the MIDI spec is like a note on, and the end of the bar is note off. Um, and what I will do is just kind of scoot these dudes over. I guess I can do this. Did I talk about quantization last week? Ellie, did we talk about quantization last week? Hello, Rapid Run. I believe we explained quantization last week, but it being as useful as it is, okay, I'm dog. becoming across it a lot. So maybe a recap? Maybe. So quantization, um, actually all digital music is quantized because in order to reproduce music from numbers, you need solid figures. You need discrete interpolation. 
between 1 and 2 because binary can only really represent whole numbers um, accurately. It can represent decimals, but anyway, enough of computer science. The point is we already have quantizations kind of in, stepped into music. You can't really see maybe on the right here, but each division of um, our measures. Um, let's do this. If I have one bar, right, or a measure, I can keep subdividing that into discrete parts. So whether it's a half or a quarter or an eighth. And I want maybe some of these inputs to line up on eighth, even though I do like the timing that Tommy had in going into it normally. But we'll use this as an example. Right here, I have these two notes. Um, inside of Piano Roll, let me fold this again so we can get a little bit closer. Um, I have D sharp. C sharp two. Um, the reason why it doesn't look like it normally would in a piano roll or the normal s rate scale that we're looking for, um, with the fold button, we'll only display the notes that are inside of like what we've played. It'll collapse all of the other lanes that don't have any note data, which is pretty useful. If you, for example, go, oh, I like the scale, so you kind of play that out, and then fold and suddenly you can play everything that's within that range um, pretty you know by doing other sequencing kind of techniques so let's take this guy did I show you this button the little headphones over here if I make my mouse gigantic you can see that there is a small headphone button that will allow us to preview the notes by clicking on them And so let's talk just for a second about quantization. If I press Command Shift U, I can quantize to the current grid or any subdivision of the measure um, up to a point. And I can choose whether the note start, end, or both is adjusted. So start and end, 100%, will lock both of these notes into the nearest eighth note range. Plow. Amazing. All right. Um, what I generally do in order to preserve some things, another way we can get into ac access to this menu is quantize, quantize settings. Um, I usually move, I usually don't worry about the end of a note unless it overlaps the next note, um, which I'll demonstrate in a second as to why that can be a problem. And I will quantize it to the current grid, which is eighth note, I could move it over, it will still probably give me, like, ooh, one eighth and one eighth triplet. I kind of want to see what that is. I have no idea what that'll, what that'll give up. Maybe it just goes to whatever the closest is, or maybe it has kind of a... I like it. Nice. Um, so this is like, let me um, extract my playing over Tommy here, because that was only kind of rude, but no, you know, he I understands. That was, I that was really pretty. <laughs> Go for it. So I'll take this out. Yeah, um, I kind of like those. Oh, but well, let's do something with it. Yeah. So I'm going to cut this. You can right click the cut. I usually, like I said, I'm the keyboard shortcut guy. I'm going to press Command or Control X if you're on Windows. I will move these guys the heck out of the way. Let's go back and make a new MIDI uh, track by right-clicking over here. Boom! You notice Command Shift T or Control if you're that kind of person. Goes in right there. I'm going to press another one, Command Shift M, and I'm going to paste the MIDI data into a new channel. Um, right now, it's not going to make any noise, but you'll find that it's gone, which is pretty cool. Um, so this other line, we gonna yeah. maybe make it like a, a bell or something? I think so. Sounds good. I'm not sure what the instrument will be, but probably something a little, a little less extravagant than uh, 
an Arturia plugin, which, you know, if we if we look into one of them a week, like we did the ARP last week, we've probably looked at the mug before. I don't wanna I don't wanna waste all of my steam. Art of Noise is tribute to Debussy. Do it. Just just constantly study. Study and practice. That's I think all we can do. So uh sounds. Ableton is a very good way of sorting those things out. I want something string like. Um if I click on this I'll get a preview. I want I actually want like a pizzicato section that I can add a reverb tail to Like, yeah, that's that's it. That's that's good. Thank you for playing. Uh, tell this. What is this? Oh. Maybe like a harp. Is that not in the string category? What if I just search for harp? Command F. It says. I don't know. But find me a harp from space. Guitar and plucked. Ah, oh, this is probably something I can use. Let's do that. So I'll drag that into this layer. Yes, I knew it would pick up this plugin. This is a Ableton built-in effect. You can buy all these separately. I think they're like seventy bucks a piece. Um, there's an instrument called Tension. That's this dude. Um. Let's uh, loop this up a bit. It's kind of low still. So select mm -hmm. all. We can either press up 12 times or press shift up to jump an octave while we're editing MIDI. Ooh, I'm off. What's up, dog? There we go. Ooh. I wonder what's happening there. It might be the folded notes. Well, the good news is, I know what I was playing. And they're all black notes. Oh, yes. Which is gonna help. So... Let's get this to behave a little bit more. Don't pay so much attention to velocity. Something that's kind of not clapping finger-like. There we go. version of this guy in here. I don't know, maybe bells would be better? What do you think? I like this, like, this kind of harp thing going on. Although, is the buffer size maybe causing it to flip? No, it's the instrument. That's just the effect of the Yeah. When if you, you change do get the... some clipping that isn't intentional, yeah. uh, as pointed out in the chat, the smaller buffer size could conceivably be oh. responsible. True. I mean, really, but we are the, liking this. The yeah. issue right now is that it's a velocity-sensitive instrument. Yeah. Oh, I see. And so, yeah. if you pluck a string too hard, it'll just appear, you know, a little bit too harsh. Similarly, we have adjustments to a filter. Let's do like a band pass. 
where I can get a section kind of in the range of what I want. Yeah, I like that. Nice. So, in keeping with the theme of today, let's also extract out these pedal notes on the bottom here. And I won't even cut them out, I'll just copy them. So I can press shift and keep clicking through. And I'll copy this section of, it's a little over eight bars. To, let's say, another MIDI track. I'm not gonna show you the tour. Maybe something kind of brassish, I don't know. I can't just paste MIDI though. I need to have a place to put it. So do that. Um, timing's good. What else do we need? Garion. The filter is just the beginning. Do I have my nice little delay? So this delay is like a extended version of the what's it called? Filter delay. The filter delay will give us a little bit more time and space. Hmm. Really. Needs to be a little faster. Disable this sync here. And so once you know kind of what the base of what you're looking for, like let's just solo this guy. Yeah. I would even make it a little wider going in. And by wider, I mean basically removing the audio from what would just be a mono sounding um, track. It's kind of hard to explain, but adding a very short delay to either side. Using this guy. Audio utility is the most underrated element inside of Ableton. And what that does is it kind of allows you to, like width allows you to additionally place objects, um, not just in a stereo field, but also kind of in like a distance type of field. Um, and once we've got there, let's give it a little bit of love. Unsolo that. Um, but there's so many tweakable parameters. What do we call this song? What, what do we call this song? Stream? Stream, what, what do you, you think? What do you want to call this? It's been like slightly rainy and pretty out here. Oh yeah. It's like, I wish I could have just sat home on Sunday instead of being busy, let the rain come in and write something like this. We get, we get rain so rarely in LA. Oh, the desert. Well, Suck. technically it's Mediterranean space. <laughs> gotta get your climatology straight. I guess. Having grown up in a swamp, I have a hard time. <laughs> uh, I guess it is. I get Mediterranean basin. They say... Give us a name, chat, for this little tune. Gotta save early and often. First lesson. Without a name, you can't save. That's a good point. And we are Even pretty a early working on. title. Let's go. Come on. I can call it Mediterranean Basin. <laughs> call it... Yeah, sure. <laughs> or, uh... Call it, like... Rainy Hearts. There we go. So I like this suggestion. Rainy Hearts is a good... It's uh, idle. Let me make a new folder. I could just kind of call it Rainy Hearts. This is actually kind of an interesting thing to bring up. So you notice I have some things that look like like the black folders. Mm -hmm. I have white folders, which are like projects. And what happens by default, if you um, if you save a Ableton Live set, a .als file, into a folder um, without any other sets, it will create a project by the name of that set. Which is weird. So if I open up the same thing, now I have a Rainy Hearts project, right? One of these guys. I guess these are templates. Remote. Maybe these are Live 8 versus Live 9 folders. I couldn't tell you. But 
this is what happens. So it becomes kind of weird to manage projects. Basically, count on if I, for example, rendered out this line, which is not a stupid idea. Um, it'll save that sample into that project. Cool. So, also anything that I process will show up there as well. Now, we've done a conventional take. What if we tried to add a little layer uh, using your other kind of uh, oh, sure. take method? That's a really cool thing to show off, I think. So let's do... Uh, let me add one more kind of texture. I want to have like a low brass or something like that. How about... Yeah, let's do a couple takes. Um, using this thing. I hear a nice low brass. Yeah. French horn. How about a French horn? Orchestral brass sounds. I would love a euphonium. So the technique that you're talking about, of course, is where we let our loop happen. And you can see those bars playing here. Um, I can make a new track. Let's do it. And inside of this track, I'm going to start auditioning some kind of percussion, some kind of something. I don't know. What else could this possibly need? Well, no, I'm not even going to go there, but some mallets. Mallets. Wow. Mallets, you say. Mallets. Mallets is one thing that Ableton does correctly. Let's see. Let's get you something. Let's let's start with the bass mallet. How about that? Okay. Do you really have a mallet instrument? I got. It. Do you know what it's what called? What they got? It's called... No, what is it? It's called Collision. Collision. All right. Collision. Interesting. Oh, yeah. I have a feeling you might like this marimba. They have a darker marimba, though? I mean, we can make it darker. Let's do it. Oh, marimba. How about marimba soft? Sure. This. Eh. How about sustain? Sustain? Yeah, the one right underneath. Marimba 7 sustain. Oh, I was thinking of just adding to What's the that? envelope here. What's that sound like, though? So here is S. We have a little ADSR filter, so there's a longer release. Let's have a look here. What else do you want to do with this marimba? I want to give it a little sustain, though. Or like a little... I wonder what that sustain patch is like. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Mm. Now let's go back to the other one. Agreed. Yeah. Do you know I'm gonna move this keyboard for you? Uh, I'm just going over here. Uh, and, and use Michelle as a right. pillow. That's cool. Ready? Yeah. So you want a, a metronome? So in this row, I have a bunch of active record buttons. Notice I have stop buttons elsewhere and along the bottom here, but I'm going to kind of let them free flow over. I don't think the timing is going to help. Numeric sliders. Oh, uh, don't worry about it. It's all this. It's all it'll 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 do you well. All right. Um, I think I might have a link in the little help uh, panel on our Twitch site. So let's see, let's let him go for it. Um, if you check out our panels underneath our Twitch page, if you're looking, if you're watching on our website, or not on, I don't know if it works on the app, I assume it does. But you can grab Live Light, um, which is compatible with a whole bunch of VSTs. 
Um, I'm I am definitely envious of those who have uh, knobs to work with. I have no quantization on. I wish I could map a sustain pedal. Let's do another one. Sure. I like that. Let's delete that automation. So we can actually, using this tool, what I kind of found last week that I want to start breaking into is, you know, DAWs are not really like a one-person operation. They don't, they're not really built for that. They kind of seem that way because a lot of people produce um, using live. Um, or other tools where you have like Pro Tools or something where you're sitting um, kind of on your own. Give me another take. Sure. Let me, um get these to come in on the one for you. Um, so what we'll do is we'll change this to one, oh, eight bars, that's useful. One bar. Weird, right? But I'm gonna let that do his thing. Cause it still records while he's rocking this thing. Um, so what I wanna do is take these two or three instruments that we have playing. Yeah. In our looping region. And actually copy them over to our live view. Um, and I can remove myself from that. Let's see if I could just play this whole row. So now we're actually not going through a ranger mode anymore. All of these play buttons suggest that we're actually playing through these loops. Um, but I did that for a very important reason. Because there are some of these loops that I want to pull out now that we've done a bunch of takes over it. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so let's see. I guess I'll just kind of play them side by side and show you kind of what I'm doing here. Because why just use a live... Like, why just use a live take that you're playing like alongside your arrangement when you can also take those live takes and make an arrangement out of each of those takes? So like here... I don't know how much timing you want on this guy, but I think that'd be fine if, like, I have the tuba. We can actually use our technique from the week before. When did we talk about launch types? Do you remember? Um, maybe two weeks ago. Okay. I remember myself, but... Because it's kind of a way we can program a song. Oh, so this is, this is huge. And I kind of want that to come in on one. Um... Let's see, okay. Oh, look, there's a clam down. Oh, a what? A little extra note. Oh, I see. I've never heard that for, that term before. Oh, yeah. Where did you learn these things? Oh, uh, we call them clams. Basically, when you fuck up into the second note, <laughs> trying to record your MIDI thing. Oh, I see. A lot of uh, my composition instructors would use that word. Now, I would say quantize you think so? Oh, yeah, but they're pretty close. But, you know, especially Four, on that do, 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 do. You want a little bit of tightness. Yeah, let's move it up. So, I mean, right now, I guess the best way to find the quantization that I would look for 
is gosh, I don't even want to skip this over to one. Let's just do it. Let's just move the whole cam let's move the whole family over to one. Um so I can see. There we go. Cool. So now I can see timing is roughly sixteenth notes across the board. You can see that they're mostly there. Some of these areas are like little grace notes. But hopefully that doesn't ruin the integrity of this performance. I mean, really, that's kind of the balance that you have to strike when you are quantizing. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I usually even go more granular just to allow Ableton to do its thing, but I think you're right about hitting... Um, Hold on. I need to change my settings. 100%. Oh, it's doing... Yeah. I need current grid. I still want to res preserve some of his timing. So what I'll do is, is this amount here, 79%. Let's kind of scoot him over. Um, and pretend that that's one. And I mean literally pretend that that's one. Right click, set one here. There we go. Cool. Let's see what other takes we have. This is a bit shorter. This is interesting. And by the way, if you guys are at home and you don't know where to start with harmony and theory, and uh, if that's the case, I hope you're watching the show right after this, Rockstar Academy and learning based on harmony and theory from Sam. But if you don't know where to start and you just want to play with something silly putty, the black keys are a great way to just play with consonant sort of overlap like this. Build some ostinatos, other, in other words, repeated figures like this. Build some tiny loops, stack them on top of each other, and then basically develop a longer composition out of those tiny loops. It's kind of a minimalist technique, but it's a great way to know nothing about composition um, and get your get your toes wet, basically. It's also a great way to know lots of things about composition and build something specifically. But it's yeah. an excellent thing for anybody just starting out who wants to kind of familiarize themselves with these tools and maybe learn the theory as they go. And if, for example, you want to take a pattern that you've played inside of this spectrum, mm -hmm. right? Like here. Let me just solo this out. Um, you can transpose those notes using Ableton as well. So there are MIDI effects which allow us to do things like adjust the pitch of the entire track. So if I'm playing in this key... <laughs> now I have something that actually does kind of fit. It is applicable. And of course you can also truncate these and then loop those little sections. So, oh yeah, um, we'll get to really example. identify little pieces of music that you can then use as new instruments. Basically, think of everything as being rooted in a sort of, um, and it's kind of like cooking, right? Hmm. You know, if you make a really good soup stock, that soup stock can be a base for your risotto. That can be <laughs> a perfect like complement to your stir fry or a first piece of your stir fry. Hmm. It can start thirty different recipes, or you can just drink the broth on its appreciate it for what it is. And this is definitely a nice little broth of a piece of paper. Kind of... Got a lot baked in. Yeah, it's becoming a thing. Would still quantize my marimbas, but that's me being self-critical. <laughs> well, I'll quantize these guys. I think that this is a pretty good minimal intro. I'm quite I'm quite the minimalist, I gotta say, when it comes to most of these things. 
So what I want to do is maybe do this kind of thing. I want to duplicate that. That's Command D to duplicate an object. Usually it works on most things. Um, and same story here. I'm going to use that trick I did last time where I'm going to move. Now I know that I'm offset by a half step. So I can press Shift up to go an octave and then press down once um, to double up this this brass section. That's a good start. Um, but all of this, to illustrate kind of a point I wanted to bring back from a couple of weeks ago of using Ableton to play, using your session to play an arrangement, um, which I think is probably the most like well-known um, implementation. I'm just going to give this guy a slightly different duration than that guy. Give me eight bars. And the original piano part, I think we will bring back in style. Um, maybe toward the end. And then I'll take another marimba part and put that into the harp and vice versa. And that'll be that. So we can actually play our arrangement live, which I probably went through very early on. Um, but this is a method of usually like DJs will do this type of thing to like do a live set and then adjust it afterward. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is pretty effective. What I want to do is now hit record, but not for any particular track but for an entire session. So I'll hit stop to make sure all of our clips are off right now. And then hit record. We have no sound to begin with. And I guess in the fashion of the song, kind of what we're working with, the material, let's, um, let's start gently. And I used to do this all the time by hand. I would start a mix, like my first Ableton tracks were kind of like this. change most of these parameters live. It's a really good exercise. But make variations, you know. You can even mute live, um, and that will be saved. What I often do is press function, like the function key, so I can mute, you can see the first channel with F1, Cool. and F3, F4 also act as mute, so I think all the way up to 8 I can mute channels. So if I wanted to isolate that, and then going into our next session. Let's see, it's a little bit of trickery, but we will hit play now and bring it back. So I don't like really the way that's ending, but I'll definitely bring us back to where we started. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. But I know, oh, I know I'm doing something wrong. I have my looped region on. That's exciting. I'm curious as to what that'll actually turn out with. Let's get rid of so, all of our arrangements. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. But that's what we do. We're at about 4.50 now. Yeah. Do you want to um, take any questions or Please. advice from the audience? And also, looks like we have a couple remixes that have been... 
Uh, oh, created. really? Yeah. People we have been. It. And there's one in remixed? particular I think you should share. What which is this? Is House Rules oh, no theme way. remixed by Garion. And I kind of want, I kind of want to hear this for the first time on the stream. I am totally into that. I also want to play this all over only to this. Oh like, yeah. Just troll Bennett with it. Always. House Rules remixes. I can't believe it. This is so good. <laughs> so we'll play this. Uh, uh send me the link. Nod, Garion. I got this. Right here, and then we will. I guess drop it in chat, maybe. Uh, it's right here. Let's give it a play, and then let's. After that, we'll call it. Didn't hmm. save my right, arrangement. I got a thing. Let's check it out. No, it's absolutely not an issue, Gary. And we are totally here. I'm glad that you did this. Where do I find it? Uh, well, I was trying to get the link, but then instead of copying the link, I... I deleted I the website. I replaced the URL bar with <laughs> the letter C. So I had to find it again. Here we are. All right. Um, Let's check it out. Cool. Let's go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me, I proudly present to you Gary and SE's green screen rules. I'm so curious about this. I don't know what's gonna happen. Hopefully SoundCloud will play. Oh, what? That's great. While we're listening, Gary, and tell us in the chat, uh, what did you use to make this? How'd you do it? Did you have any trouble or questions that came up along the way? Oh, cool. <laughs> I love it. Nice beat. Can't be stopped. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if I tag Bennett in this. Yo. All right. <laughs> ah, cool. I like where this 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 plant too. It's getting serious. <laughs> Whoa. That is like a straight up earthbound battle theme. <laughs> really good. Wait, it's playing on leap. It's oh, playing no. on loop. What? It can't be stopped. It can't be stopped. It seriously can't be stopped. We're just gonna have to listen to Wait, it forever. Use this with audacity and buzz, huh? It's really good. Hi. All right. No, I don't. Good. Actually, Bennett sent me a remix of the House Rules song the other day. Was it the same remix? No, was it, it was it was a different one. Nice. Um, let me see. I just look for poo in my email because I don't know. That was the that was the original. Oh, here's a new remix. Hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Tell Bennett <laughs> that I want a Nightcore version of this. No, all right. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell him right now. This is the this is the official Nightcore version. Hardcore House Rules remix by Fulaka. <laughs> yeah. Nice drums. I bet he's using that sample pack. 
Uh, we should ask him to make a Nightcore version. Anyway, let's kick it over. Please kick it over. Please make <laughs> a Nightcore version. Alright, everybody. That's it for a little help this week. I'll be out next week, so Ben will be manning a little help on his own. But I will be here I only have tomorrow in during Power Block recording uh, some vocals for Cats on Mars, my, Excellent. my music project. So I'm excited look for forward that. to that. And of course, I'll be here on Small Window this week, too. So Small Window happens. We will see you later. But for now, let's go to Sam Lustig, no. Rockstar Academy time.